uh, which is what um, what's shaped and influenced your views on Bitcoin? Elon, uh, what's influenced your views on Bitcoin? Well, I've I thought about money for quite a while, obviously, since the PayPal days. Um, the uh, uh, and then the, the companies that preceded that, X.com, which I created, and, and uh, Confinity, which uh, Peter Thiel, Max Levchin, uh, Luke Howery, and others created. Um, and we combined the companies and made PayPal. Made PayPal. So I've been thinking about money for a long time. Um, and re really, it's, it, it's, like, it's best to think of money as an information system, uh, primarily an information system for labor allocation. Um, and uh, for practical purposes, it exists in a series of uh, heterogeneous databases, like very different databases in uh, bank mainframes around the world. Uh, it uh, moves quite slowly in reality. It may seem to move fast sometimes, and it does with PayPal, which is real time. But uh, the vast majority of the systems out there are batch processing. So the actual uh, reconciliation may take uh, one to five uh, business days, uh, so sometimes longer. Um, and the, the, you have the ACH system, which is ancient and still still in operation, which is um, allows transfers uh, effectively like a, a check would be an ACH tra transfer, but it's it's not secure. And you've got the uh, credit card systems, which are also uh, not secure. It would be like handing your username and password to a stranger in a restaurant if, if you buy a meal. So um, there's, there's definitely an opportunity for uh, something that is uh, that is better from an inf information theory standpoint. So, um, and, and and there you can think of it like data data on a network, I think, is, is the way to view it. Um, what has the, the most throughput? What has uh, the, the least error? Uh, lost, uh, what, what drops the fewest packets? Uh, fraud, fraud, for example, being a source of error. Um, and uh, uh, government interference in currencies being a source of error. Um, but it's, it's fundamentally an information system. So um, I think it makes sense to support something that uh, improves the, uh, the the quality of information with which we conduct the economy. Um, and you know, Bitcoin is uh, a candidate for that. Uh, it, is, it does, I think, some things well, um, and it's obviously, it's, it's evolving, and there are additional things like Lightning being done on top of Bitcoin. Um, but, but Bitcoin, per se, is mostly solving for uh, scarcity, um, or, or rather solving for uh, essentially um, having no throat to choke, decentralized. Uh, so there's, there's no one who can be uh, coerced in any way uh, to uh, empty that Bitcoin account. Well, I guess they could technically buy it on an individual basis, but the system as a whole cannot. Um, and, um, and it has an open ledger, uh, which is also quite, quite good. Um, but transaction volume is is low. Uh, transaction transaction cost is high, uh, and usability for the average person is is not is not yet very good. But it has a lot of potential. Um, and I should say that, like I, I'm not. And I apologize for taking a long time, but there's, there certainly is lots to say. Um, in general, I'm a supporter of, of Bitcoin um, and uh, the idea of cryptocurrency in general. Um, uh, but as I've said publicly, we, we do need to watch, to watch out for uh, crypto taking, uh, especially Bitcoin, using proof of work to maybe use energy that's maybe a bit too much uh, and, and not necessarily uh, good for the environment. So, um, but on balance, I support Bitcoin, and I, I and I, I'm not an investor. I don't, the only publicly traded stock I own is Tesla, um, and the only significant thing I own outside of Tesla is, is, is my SpaceX stock that, that, that um, you know, could help create both companies. So, um, but, out, but apart from that, uh, I do own Bitcoin uh, and, and Tesla owns, owns Bitcoin, SpaceX owns Bitcoin. Um, and I do personally uh, own a bit of Ethereum and, and Dogecoin, of course. So. I'm curious your opinion on this. You, you mentioned earlier uh, about Bitcoin's throughput, or the, the importance of throughput, um, maybe some concerns around Bitcoin. Uh, can you speak, do you, th do you think Bitcoin can become peer-to-peer -peer cash? Um, well, Bitcoin does have a fundamentally a fundamental scarce, scarcity limit at the base layer uh, that's designed in. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have some layer two system in theory like Lightning. Um, and I understand Lightning is doing well in, in, in some small countries. Um, 
there's there's some question mark as to whether you need um, a money transmitter license. Um, just a debate as to whether that's needed, um, given that it is not uh, open ledger. Um, so it's there's and that's that's a whole separate debate, of course. Um, but Bitcoin, but Bitcoin by itself simply cannot scale to be the monetary system for the world at base layer. But with a second layer, this is possible depending upon how that that second layer is implemented. Um, and uh, yeah, that's part of why I think there's, there's there, there may be some merit um, to uh, <laughs> so something that may seem silly, like like Ethereum, like like Dogecoin. Um, I, I think Ethereum also, uh, my, like I said, my, like the three the three things I, I own outside of SpaceX and Tesla, uh, and also obviously it's a Neuralink and Boring Company, but but of any significance are um, Bitcoin by far, and then so, some Ethereum and some Doge. Um, so you know, if, if if the price of Bitcoin goes down, I I uh, I lose money. I, I'm not sort of, you know, um, you know, I might pump, but I don't dump. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it, it's not a case of um, I, I definitely do not believe in <laughs> in getting the price high and selling or anything like that. Um, so, uh, and I would like to see Bitcoin succeed. Um, uh, I think there's there's some merit to this is not a slam on Bitcoin. There's some merit to, to consider considering uh, a, a something that has a higher max transaction rate um, and a lower transaction cost, um, and kind of seeing how far you could take a single layer network where the uh, exchanges act as a de facto uh, second layer. Um, I think you can probably take that further than people realize, and and as uh, bandwidth increases over time, uh, latency decreases. Uh, I mean, uh, SpaceX and Starlink is actually playing a role in this, um, and I think long term people will probably have, you know, access. to uh, worldwide access to gigabit level uh, connectivity at low latency. And so uh, at, at, at low cost. And so then, you know, your, your, your base layer could do a lot of transactions if you uh, take that into account. Um, so yeah, but, but like I said, Bitcoin with a layer two system, um, so they could scale to do a vast number of transactions. Uh, same goes for Ethereum. A question about the um, <clears throat> scaling at the layer one. The, the concern from you know the past five years of debate in the Bitcoin community is that that would sacrifice too much uh, decentralization and hurt the censorship resistant properties of Bitcoin. Um, I'm curious, if, if you know, what are your thoughts on that? Are, are you sensitive to that? Do you, and are you concerned about losing some of the special properties of Bitcoin or, or, or another cryptocurrency by scaling at layer one? Yeah, I mean, th these things are it's helpful to like use the physics tools of thinking and say, you know, scale up, scale down and see if it still makes sense. So if scaling up the transaction block doesn't make sense, why don't you scale it down? And have it be, you know, so that somebody, you know, with a laptop from 2008 can still run a Bitcoin node. Why not slow it down? Oh, you want to slow it down? Well, maybe you have, maybe you're at the wrong number then. <laughs> there's, there's actually people. There's members in the community that do do want to slow it down. <laughs> but I, but I understand you. No, it's, it's silly. Um, the 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 reality is like the average person is not going to run um, a Bitcoin node. So. This is this is a and 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 Bitcoin, you know, uh, it was a lot of clever ideas, but uh, you know, th th these parameters were set. I don't know what in two thousand eight or something, uh, maybe two thousand nine. Um, and there's like there been some improvements uh, since then, but but not a lot. So, um, you know, it's sort of like if, you, if, if the. the there was still in 2008. There was still a, a non-trivial number of people on modems. <laughs> so, um, you know, now now it is it is uh, quite common to get uh, uh, 100 megabits uh, 
connection just for a house. Some, some houses have gigabit connections. So, um, and that, that trend is obviously in the direction of higher bandwidth and lower latency. Um, and if somebody else doesn't do it, Starlink certainly will. So I have high confidence that uh, you will be able to maintain a decentralized finance system while still having a much bigger blockchain, AKA tech, ASCII text, text ledger, um, <laughs> a hash ledger. Um, you can make the hash ledger bigger um, without uh, suffering from decentralization as uh, the average connectivity improves, obviously. One idea would be to run of or to put a Bitcoin full node in, in Starlink ter terminals. That way more people would be, be running. I uh, actually, <laughs> I have run this by the team at one point. Um, I had this idea, which is kind of off the wall, but uh, like, let's say you need a, a, a little space heater. Um, and normally your space heater would uh, just be pure entropy. Um, but what if that space heater was also a, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge mining node? Uh, pick, pick your currency. Um, and so then you'd be heated up and uh, you would also mine, uh, uh, you know, your, your crypto uh, and have connectivity in one. I love that idea. Yeah. I mean, better than running a space heater. Absolutely. Are, are there any other, um, you know, so you're, you're drawn to, to Dogecoin a little bit. Are there any other gaps in Bitcoin that you see that cause you to, to be drawn to, towards Dogecoin? Oh, I think, um, <laughs> um, I mean, I think there's, there's, um, there's a, Doge has, uh, the Doge community, I think has, uh, is somewhat irreverent, obviously, and uh, is, uh, has great memes and loves dogs. And I, I love dogs and memes. And um, uh, it, it does, um, and, um, you know, I think the, you know, there's, there's, there's a, uh, there's Occam's razor, which is the, the 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 simplest answer is the most likely. Uh, it's a summary of Occam's razor. The simplest answer is the most likely one. Then there's a friend of mine came up with a variant on that that the most ironic outcome is the most likely one. Um, and then I have a variant on that which is the most entertaining outcome is the most likely one. So if that is true, then the most ironic and entertaining outcome would be that the, the cryptocurrency that was started as a joke. <laughs> to make fun of cryptocurrencies ends up being the lead the leading cryptocurrency <laughs> that would be the most ironic outcome i'd also point out there's nothing stopping someone from creating a bitcoin wallet that has that's like fun and has memes has dogs that's possible as well uh -huh. <laughs> um great let's move on to the right now at this point <laughs> um let's move on to the next topic which is bitcoin and energy it's a really hot topic um, that lots of people are talking about. Um, let's start with uh, Elon. You've been vocal on this. You've uh, you've said that. I mean, you said many things about it. Um, you've also said that uh, Tesla will resume payments in Bitcoin payments if the renewable energy is approximately fifty percent and and sort of looks like it's on a positive future yeah. trend. Um, what do you think the state of things are with respect to that? Yeah, so I, I do think that um, it, it, there, there appears to be a positive trend um, in the energy usage of Bitcoin. Uh, actually, part of this is due to the drop in Bitcoin price. Um, so um, I mean, what, what I observed or what I thought I was seeing, um, there may be some disagreements on this, but uh, from when uh, Tesla announced that it had acquired Bitcoin and was doing Bitcoin transactions, there, there was a massive run up in the Bitcoin price. Um, and also a massive increase in the amount of energy used to mine Bitcoin. Um, and I think the, you know, I, I, I understand renewable energy quite a bit. I mean, te te Tesla does solar and is uh, interacts with uh, a lot of uh, wind generation uh, through our mega pack because, you know, basically need to store energy from wind and from solar. So we're pl pretty plugged into the renewable in energy industry. Um, and there's, there's just no way that you could basically double or triple the amount of energy in such a short period of time with renewables. Um, but you could shovel coal that fast. And so I was like, look, this is this is too sketchy. Tesla's mission is accelerating uh, the advent of sustainable energy. Um, we, we can't be the company that does that and also um, 
not do appropriate diligence on the energy usage of Bitcoin. So, um, so all I did was I said, look, we're, we're going to suspend Bitcoin transactions for now. We're not selling any Bitcoin, nor am I selling anything personally, or nor is SpaceX selling any Bitcoin. Um, again, I want to emphasize uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and, and I own Bitcoin. Uh, uh, I, I also own a little bit of Ethereum and Doge, but the companies just own Bitcoin, um, and the Bitcoin that I own is worth uh, much more than the Ethereum or Doge. So uh, clearly, if I'm... Uh, you know, if the, the, these actions negatively affect me financially. If I was purely financially motivated, then uh, I would I would not uh, express this reticence about uh, Bitcoin energy usage. Um, now, the it, it looks like Bitcoin is shifting a lot more towards renewables, um, and a bunch of the um, heavy duty coal plants that were being used, unequivocally being used, this is not a question mark, um, have been shut down, especially in, in China. So uh, I think it's probably, uh, I, I, we want to do a little bit more diligence um, to confirm uh, that the, could, could confirm that the percentage of renewable energy usage is most likely uh, sort of at or above 50%. Um, and that there is, that, that, that there is a trend towards increasing that number. Um, and if so, then Tesla will resume Bitcoin, uh, accepting Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. So I think we want to just do a little bit more diligence. And, and I think, but most likely the answer is that Tesla would, would resume accepting Bitcoin. Most, most likely. That's Steve, good to hear. I would Steve, agree with that. Kathy? Yeah, may I ask a question? Um, Elon, I'm not quite sure if you saw the paper uh, that Square and ARC did together on um, making uh, Bitcoin mining a part of a utility, uh, you know, a broad-based utility ecosystem whereby, you know, the overage from sunshine or wind uh, uh, powers the Bitcoin mining machine, thereby uh, enabling uh, the proliferation of renewables uh, to a much faster extent or at a faster rate than otherwise would be the case. What do you think of that? Well, the problem is that um, in order to operate um, so-called uh, mining or hashing rigs, uh, in order to op operate a bunch of hashing rigs, uh, uh, you eff effectively, you have to run them 24-7, um, which means you need base load. Uh, you can do that with uh, solar and wind plus battery, but if you only did it based on solar wind overage, uh, your, um, your, your hashing rig utilization would be much less. So you'd be at a disadvantage. Sure, uh, it'd be a disadvantage. Hydro, or geothermal, hydro or geothermal are great for mm -hmm. as renewable means. I'm also uh, pro pro nuclear. Uh, I think modern nuclear power plants are safe, uh, contrary to what people may think. Um, so, um, I really think we, you know, we, um, it's, it's possible to make in, in, very, very extremely safe <laughs> nuclear. I'm talking about fission. You don't need fusion. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, fusion, you just got that big fusion reactor in the sky called the sun. It comes up every, you know, every day. Um, so, uh, but I think a combination of solar and wind plus uh, stationary storage uh, will get you that uh, uh, base load so you can run uh, uh, hashing 24-7. And like Elon, specifically, could Tesla Energy or Starlink play a role? Well, um, I think Tesla can play a role, or t I mean, Tesla's um, uh, literal like reason for existence. Um, I mean, the reason I've, I've I've put so much of my life energy into Tesla, which is a lot. Um, in fact, it's I would say that I've had some 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 pretty tough life experiences, and Tesla is responsible for probably two thirds of all prof all personal and professional pain combined. Just to give you a sense of perspective there. Um, so this is a hella hard situation. Um, but we, we, we do solar, uh, commercial solar, um, solar retrofit, as well as the solar um, roof. Um, and we make uh, consumer um, battery packs called Powerwall for houses and small businesses. And then the utility scale, uh, which, which are gigantic. These we, we've done now uh, a number of, of gigawatt hour installations. Like it, it, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of them actually have been for load leveling the grid. Mostly they are. 
um, and and combined with like big so like the one the first really big one we did, which is um, 100 megawatt installation in um, in Australia. Uh, uh, that's actually helped stabilize a huge portion of the South Australian grid um, because it's able to react so fast. Um, in fact, at first, um, <laughs> they, they've, they've got the, a billing system in, in Australia that I think works at the sort of millisecond level, and we were operating at the microsecond level. <laughs> so it was, it was the system was operating so fast that, that the measuring system couldn't see it. But um, so, so Tesla certainly doing doing a lot to. Um, uh, enable renewables, uh, especially wind and solar. Um, uh, and in fact, the limiting factor for us right now is cell production. So we, we need to um, both internally uh, get our, the Tesla internal, internal battery cells produced, as well as uh, increased supply from suppliers. Um, and generally, when I talk to our suppliers, they say, what, what, how many cells would you like us? So how many cells can you make? Um, you know, because sometimes they're like, Concerned, like, was Tesla going to compete with them on sales? I'm like, no, no. If you want to make the sales, be our guest. It's just that we we need a crazy. Okay, guys, I'm going to reset the uh, stream for a bit. Don't worry, we are still here. For, um, so, um, <clears throat> you know, that's that's just difficult to, for Tesla to support in that situation. So I, I think, um, I know, but I do think long-term renewable energy will actually be the cheapest form of energy. It just takes, it just doesn't happen overnight. Um, but as long as, that there, as long as there is a, a conscious and, and, and determined and real effort by the mining community to move towards renewables, then obviously Tesla can support that. Tweeted before that any wallet that doesn't give the user their private key should be avoided at all costs. Um, <laughs> can you tell us more about what, why is that important, and and you know how does it what's its relationship with decentralization? Well, <clears throat> it's difficult to say that if if you uh, own crypto in an exchange and that exchange does not give you your private keys. It's not clear that you own anything. I mean, if if, if there's something that if that exchange breaks or is hacked or uh, you know um, or or is subject to seizure by the government or something like that, uh, you you don't your group your crypto is gone. Um, so in order to actually have a properly decentralized finance, you uh, which I'm a fan of, um, I think it makes sense. Uh, then you, you you have to own your your private keys um, and you should be the only one who has your private keys <laughs> so if you're the only one who has the private keys then then you own it <laughs> um, if you if someone else has your private keys effectively they own it too um, and your your the security of your crypto is then dependent upon them or any entity that can affect uh, them so uh, yeah um, I, I think what Jack's doing sounds, sounds like a good idea to have um, you know a hardware wallet that uh, that's the, that's the only thing that contains your private keys. Um, I think that, that's like it, in, in, in terms of sort of empowering the people, which I very much, very much believe in. Then I, I think you want to have people have the, the their own wallets and uh, and be the only ones that ca that uh, that have the private keys that that wallet, so so called wallet, <laughs> the other side of the <laughs> of the crypto. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> and I think. <laughs> I think we'll see an emergence too of new solutions that um, use multi-sig, uh, like like with a two or three keys, where the the user has two keys, and then you you get assisted custody by having an institution hold hold a third key. Can be a good good solution as well. Yeah, um, well, you can just put your private key in in something that has dual access or or, or voting access as as a, as an application on on an existing network. I'm more, I'm more focused on like how do we create economic incentives in the network itself without having to rely on advertising. Yeah, it's just that the, the, the money has to come off of the, or the, 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 I mean, the crypto so-called coins, the hash strings, have to come off the and, and get translated into real products and services. So the more uh, sort of off-ramps there are to real products, products and services, even at the institutional level, although I mean there are certainly many small advertisers on, on Twitter, um, it seems like like accepting Bitcoin 
maybe maybe some other cryptos uh, for uh, advertising payments on on Twitter uh, would be supportive of of, of Bitcoin. Hundred percent, and also looking at just general commerce um, sure. through yeah. through Twitter itself. That was okay. <laughs> Sorry, what, Elon? I was asking Jack if he's going to do it. Oh. <laughs> no, I can, I was gonna, can we get, get a product it. announcement today? <laughs> <laughs> um, Elon, how about you? Um, you know, you, you obviously you're a big personality on Twitter. Um, what are your thoughts on your your role and your com company's role in um, in Bitcoin and sort of preserving the ethos? Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I, I generally think uh, we should do things that uh, benefit the people as a whole and uh, increase the probability that the future is good. So, you know, I think. It's, it, to me, it just seems self-evident that we should kind of um, take these set of actions most likely to make the future good. Um, and I think probably, um, probably uh, you know, crypto or you know, these some of the cryptocurrencies uh, will make the future better most likely. It's, it's not you know the, I always think of these things in terms of probabilities, um, but I think it's, it's probably better for. A prosperous Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, maybe some others in the future, um, and uh, and I think it, it can have uh, an empowering effect uh, on for for individuals um, and um, increase the power of the individual relative to government. And it really, you know, if you think of government, gov government is just a corporation in the limit. So sometimes some people are like uh, against corporations, but for government, it's like guys. Government is just a corporation in the limit. It's the biggest corporation of all, and it's got a monopoly on violence. So if you don't like corporations, you should really hate government. There you go. All right. Let's, we got about. It's funny, like, I, it kind of like Tesla's bank balances in Europe have negative interest rate. It drives me yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, t technically, if, you, if you've got like 2% inflation, on one percent interest, you're technically minus one percent uh, return, uh, but nonetheless, it is just it is quite annoying to just see your bank ba bank balance drop in real time in Europe. It's Europe has negative interest rates. This is insane. Yeah. Paying the banks, <laughs> like, what? Paying the banks to hold the bank to keep yeah. your money. <laughs> I'm like, it's, what? It is crazy. <laughs> like, what? We, we definitely move that into Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I believe Ray Dalio said uh, buy Bitcoin and not bonds. So, well, my my hopeful, um, I guess, crypto in general uh, is that it can improve the efficiency of the information system that we call money. Um, so, if if the, the core efficiency of money is improved and the um, and money has less error, where like I said, er error is like in any kind of government interference or fraud or anything like that, uh, this will na naturally lead to uh, uh, basically a better standard of living and more power to the to the individual which i very much agree with